Hi, today I wanted to do a review of this pen that was sent to me by my wonderful pen pal in England and it is the Platinum Carbon Ink pen, fountain pen, in black. This is what the packaging looked like. It just came in um, this plastic sleeve which is clearly of no use to me um, seeing as I don't read Japanese. So, <clears throat> it came in this and this is what the pen looks like. It's uh, a pretty interesting looking design. It has the cap um, and then it just tapers down to a really small point here at the end. So, let me give you a measurement. Let's see. I tried to come totally prepared this time with my lighting and everything. So, um, it looks like capped. I know it's hard to see with this ruler, but it's seven inches. And it's just a smooth black plastic. The only thing that is any indication of what kind of pen it is is this platinum sign and then carbon pen on it. Um, this is what the pen looks like fully capped. And uh, can it be unfully capped? And then this just comes off. Clearly, uh, there's no ability to post because that's just not what, the way this pen was made. You know, I have a feeling now that I'm just looking at the shape that this pen was probably made for one of those desk pen sets that have, you know, the, the block or whatever and then the, the little pen holders and then you can just stick this in there because the pen body is a smooth, shiny plastic and the cap is like some other kind of plastic and it seems, it's just kind of ugly looking. Um, and it doesn't really seem like it fits with this pen. So this seems like it would go in a desk set. Uh, I when I picture it this way it seems like a, a pen that would do that anyway on this end there's really nothing there uh, and then this is what the pen looks like it has gold accents to match the gold branding one thin gold band there and then a gold nib there's nothing else on the nib other than the platinum si symbol that's it um, the pen com has no clip obviously uh, comes apart like this so I just unscrew it and I've used this pen um, kind of toying with the idea of not doing any more first impressions I don't know we'll see how that goes but I've used this pen quite a bit as you can see um, the ink refill looks like it's about down to there um, but it came with this cartridge and it's just platinum carbon ink and you just push it down in there, break the seal, and it's ready to go. And it was ready to go very quickly out of the bag as soon as I pushed the, the cartridge in, or the, yeah, the cartridge in there. So, um, you can't really see any feed on the back, so I don't really know. I haven't tried to pull this pen apart, um, but I just wanted to kind of show you it's just a different looking pen. And I, I don't know if this, I think this is probably a relatively inexpensive fountain pen to replace whatever would go in a desk set, but that's the way it looks underneath. I think if I was going to not buy cartridges, I would have to fill the cartridge with a, with a syringe and then it would work for me. I don't, there's, I don't know if it would, I can't imagine that a converter would fit in this shape of a pen and, um, it didn't, I, I, I'm sure there's got to be some like breathing holes in there, but I just don't see them. So, <clears throat> the grip section is just smooth plastic like the rest of the pen. It tapers down nicely to the nib. One nice thing about the way this feels is, um, you know, there's no, no ridges or anything, and this is totally unnoticeable. So, let's write something and see how it works. Now, again, I have been using this pen, and so I have a pretty good idea of how it works, but I'm just going to go through it with you. Um, this is, let's get it a good angle here. This is a platinum. So you can see it had just a tiny little bit of a startup issue there. I'm a little rusty, uh, so is the pen, but I haven't written with it for probably a week, and um, as soon as I got that little swoop done in the P, it was ready to go. So this is a platinum carbon ink 
fountain pen, I guess I'll call it. And it's in black. This is ARC notebook paper. This is the large size ARC notebook paper and it does feel a little different. So, um, just some impressions about the pen. First of all, it doesn't have a size on it as far as like fine or medium, but this feels like an extra fine. It is super, super fine lined. Um, I will, I'll grab another pen for comparison in a minute, but I don't have a size for you. I think they only come in one size. So let's talk a little bit about the, um, the grip feel uh, and the size of it. So this is a very nice, um, it's a very comfortable diameter of a grip. This feels very much like any kind of um, normal sized pen outside of the fountain pen realm. It's, it's pretty small. Um, some fountain pen grips just feel real chunky. This, this one doesn't. It's, it's comfortable. Um, it's smooth. I don't really have an issue with it sliding. I know um, sometimes when I hold pens that are completely smooth in the grip, they feel slippery. This one doesn't feel slippery. It, it, it feels like it, it's grippy enough. I don't know if grippy is a word, but that's what I'm saying. As far as the weight um, and size of the pen, I'm going to kind of tilt it up a little bit. You can see that I have plenty of pen to rest on my hand beyond where I'm holding it. So the length length would be suitable for the largest of hands. The 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 weight of it is incredibly light. So this is uh, an incredibly light fountain pen. You really don't. I mean. I'm trying to think of like some of the lightest pens that I own and this might be one of them. It's super lightweight. Uh, you barely feel it. And as far as uh, balance, it's super well balanced. So when I hold the pen just like on this end, obviously it's going to weight more towards the end where the fountain, where the nib is. But if I put my finger like like right about here, that's where the pen, of course I'm going to, to drop it, but that's where the pen feels like it balances out. And that's about where you'd hold it. So between this end and this end, the balancing point is right about where you would hold it, which is, it seems like a, a well-balanced pen to me. Some pens, you know, they're like bottom heavy or top heavy. Uh, this feels really balanced right at the point where I'd want it to be, right where I'm holding it. Um, let's see. Some things about the nib. So I'm just kind of looking at some notes that I've made because I want to try to, to cover similar bases when I'm making these videos but not make them super formulaic. Um, but I think certain things are important to know. So now I'm going to talk about the nib. So this has to be at least an extra fine nib. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is so scratchy. I mean, each, <laughs> every, you feel everything on the page. So the nib is definitely scratchy. It's not at all got any kind of a sweet spot. There's no smooth, no smoothness or sweet spot. Some pens, once you hit that spot, the pen just flows. This one, it is pretty much scratchy all over the place. And I haven't, um, I haven't tried to smooth it at all. And I don't know if this is the type, you know, I don't even know if it's worth it to smooth it. Just for comparative purposes, um, this is an EF, an extra fine Twisby nib. And I don't know if that's fair to compare because I think Twisbys are German. 
but l look at the, you can physically see the difference in the nib size. The EF looks like a monster compared to that, uh, the carbon. You know, and now I'm thinking about it. I wonder if I have an EF. I don't think I have an EF. Um, no. Japanese nib. This is a fine. This is a pilot. This is a fine, which is sort of comparative, but you can see that carbon tip there is, or the nib is like super, super skinny. So I don't know if that would ever not feel, oh, I'll just throw everything everywhere. I don't know if that would ever not feel scratchy. I haven't tried to tune it and it really doesn't bother me because when I look at it, I, I wouldn't expect something like this to be smooth at all. So it's pretty scratchy. Um, however, I have to say that with the, the exception of this little line right here and just like the very first stroke, um, no real startup issues at all, even when it's been sitting there for several weeks. I've had this pen for a while. No real startup issues at all beyond the first, um, the first stroke. And I have written at length with this pen, and I can honestly say there are absolutely no skipping issues. Which I always like. Um, I think that might be the one thing that bothers me, other than startup issues, is skipping issues. Because I, I don't feel your pen should ever skip. I don't care what kind of pen it is. And um, that's really frustrating to me. And so any pen that does that, I immediately get <laughs> frustrated, especially if I can't find a sweet spot where it doesn't do that. And when it consistently does that, it's gone. So um, absolutely no skipping issues. It has extremely um, consistent ink flow. And this is something that I've experienced in longer writing sessions. Just it keeps up. It never has a problem. Um, one thing that I really like about this nib, of course, that comes with the fineness, is it has um, very sharp and crisp lines. If you have tiny writing or if you are doing something complicated like some sort of characters, like in Japanese, I would imagine, or if you were doing calligraphy where you didn't want it to you know, flex. I don't know if that's ever a thing, but to me, this just seems, I guess I feel like, even though it doesn't look this way, this would be like an excellent scientific mathematical kind of pen to use because it's so sharp and crisp and the line is so well defined um, that it, it doesn't seem, you know, sometimes pens seem messy. This pen doesn't seem messy to me at all. So when you look at the the writing, even though I have kind of like scrolly sort of writing, well, I don't know if that shows it very well. It's just super crisp. I mean, it 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 almost looks it almost doesn't look like a pen, but you know it's a pen. I don't know how else to explain that. But I just really love that sharp line to it. And I think that's why I like fine tipped pens because I really like that sharp crisp line to my writing because my writing is so, bleh, you know. Um, so let's look at some line width and I will compare this with, um, well, let's just look at some line width first. And let's look at some dry time as well. So if I'm just gonna do lines, um, it consistently writes, no issue, and it was like this the first time I put the cartridge in. Um, so it's without any pressure at all on the paper. You get a nice consistent line. And now I will try to put some pressure on it. This is definitely not meant to be a flex pen and the amount of pressure I'm putting on this is totally uh, unreasonable. And it almost feels like it would cut through the paper. 
So that's with pushing very hard. Um, you're going to get a line that's sort of like that. And then you can see with pushing that hard, it's kind of almost started to bleed. And you know, in just thinking about this, I wonder if because this is such a super fine tip line and it's so sharp, I wonder if it would bleed on unfriendly fountain paper, fountain pen paper. Uh, like just regular random notebook paper because you know it's so dry and, and sharp speaking of dryness let's just kind of um, do some loops you saw that I immediately this is totally unscientific but I immediately ran my finger over it and there's no smudging at all very fast dry time um, but it doesn't feel like a dry writer it certainly doesn't feel like I'm putting in any effort to get the ink to flow. It doesn't feel dry, but it, because it's so fine, it just dries instantly. And I think that would make it um, a good pen for anybody, you know, especially somebody that was like left-handed, um, if you could get past the sharpness of the nib. But that's, I guess, why I think it would be good for like science or math because you're writing down things. I, I don't know. Ignore what I just said about that. I don't know if it makes sense in my brain. Um, so let's look at... Um, I'm going to compare the line width to the fine pilot and then I will do the the EF the extra fine Twisby. So here's the fine pilot. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to do a new set of lines. So, here's the fine pilot comparison. And it is finer. I can I can see it just with the naked eye. And then here is with the Twisby Mini. And it looks finer than the Twisby Mini. So here was with the Pilot Petite, the carbon pen, then the Pilot Petite fine nib, carbon pen and the Twisby is a wet writer, huh? <laughs> and then the Twisby, um, extra fine. And it's smaller than both of those. So I don't know. This must be like an extra, extra fine or something. So um, as far as issues or problems I've had with the pen, I have had absolutely uh, zero problems. As long as I'm, I'm not expecting it to be smooth and I know it's going to be scratchy, this is an awesome pen. It's not the best looking pen out there, um, but you know, when I'm just wanting a fine tip fountain pen, I, I think this is a really nice option. Um, other than other than it being scratchy and having a really ugly cap, which I don't think is meant to be a permanent cap for this kind of a pen. I think it goes in a desk set. I remember my dad having something like that, and it seemed like the pens that were sticking out were like tapered like this. Not fountain pens, but I think that's what it's for. Um, but if you're just looking for something to go in that desk set, I think these are probably pretty inexpensive. Uh, but it's just kind of a cool fountain pen to have. And if you want something that's really small um, sharp, or really fine, sharp lines, like to, to do your banking with, like your bank balancing your bank book or something. Do people do that these days other than me? I don't know. Um, this would be a great option. And it dries so fast. Um, I don't know. It just seems like a pretty cool pen. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Platinum Carbon Pen, and if you have any questions, you can leave them below for me, and as always, I definitely appreciate your comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.